Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live session. Tonight, my name is uh, Dominika Gidrevic. I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist, gastroenterologist in Calgary. I am also on the Professional Advisory Committee for the Canadian Celiac Association. And it is my pleasure tonight to talk to you about some of the atypical symptoms of celiac disease. Uh, the first one I'll be talking about tonight is bone health. And um, the focus, as you know, of this May Celiac Awareness Month is to bring awareness to some of these more atypical symptoms. This is my first time on Facebook Live. So if things are going well, please give me a thumbs up um, that, you, that everything is going well. That would be really much appreciated. Thank you. So first of all, when, when uh, adults uh, with celiac disease are screened for bone mineral density, we know that one third of them have osteoporosis at, diagno uh, at the diagnosis, one third of them have osteopenia, and the other third have no normal bone mineral density. So it really is a big problem in patients with celiac disease. And when we look at children, about 10 to 30% of them at diagnosis have low bone mineral density. And in children, uh, that is calculated more as we call a Z score, which is how, um, how far they are from the mean of other children their same uh, age and gender. So some of the causes for low bone mineral density include malabsorption of calcium and vitamin D. So the way I usually like to describe uh, celiac disease to my patients is if you have an intestine, you have nice tall villi, and in patients with celiac disease, those villi are flat. And when those villi are flat, then you cannot absorb your calcium very well. You also can't absorb your vitamin D very well. And that poor absorption of calcium and vitamin D sends signals to hormone, um, to your brain, such as uh, and parathyroids, telling them that you're not absorbing calcium well. And then you get secondary hyperparathyroidism, which then leaches calcium from the bones. And that's just not the only reason patients with uh, active celiac disease have um, poor um, low bone mineral density. They can also actually have it because of the high inflammatory markers that are circulating because of this intestinal inflammation. And those inflammatory markers also result in leaching of calcium from the bone. So I call it like a two hit kind of phenom phenomenon. One is from the malabsorption and the other one is from the high inflammatory markers. The other thing, um, is not just that the vitamin D is malabsorbed as the calcium, but also we live in Canada where, especially here in, the nor in Alberta, uh, we, have, we don't have much sunlight for parts of the year. And so we know that 40% of children at the time of diagnosis have low levels of vitamin D. We know that in adults, the high, those that are high risk of having osteoporosis are uh, adults diagnosed later in life, also females um, after the age of menopause. So I often ask my, when I have a newly diagnosed patient in my clinic, a child, I always ask all the family members to be screened for celiac disease to, because many times uh, they may not have any symptoms and I worry about the, the health of their bones if in fact they do have celiac disease and they go many years undiagnosed. We also know that in, at least in studies from children, that their bone mineral density does recover after they start on a gluten-free diet. It does take a while. Uh, it does show a good recovery after the first year on a gluten-free diet, and it continues to recover into the second year. And by five years, many children have recovered their bone min mineral density, but it can take a while. And in children, we know that by the end of puberty, they have uh, maximized their growth of their skeleton and their bone mass. And so this is another reason why it's so important to recognize celiac disease as soon as possible is to allow uh, children to maximize their bone, uh, their bone health. There have been some studies also looking at if patients with celiac disease are at higher risk of fractures. I can tell you from my personal clinical experience, I do have patients who come to me who've had a few fractures, and that is what actually led their family doctor to do a CNAC screen, which is fantastic uh, that it was done. Um, 
there is a high risk of fractures in patients prior to the diagnosis of celiac disease um, related to, the, to this osteoporosis. So after patients are diagnosed with celiac disease, um, going on a gluten-free diet, as I mentioned, helps their bones recover. And also making sure that patients have adequate vitamin D and calcium in intake. So I encourage all my patients to go on a vitamin D supplement um, to, help, to help their bones. And I also go over if they're having enough calcium intake uh, in their diet. Uh, recommended is around 1,300 milligrams um, in children who are going through puberty and about 1,000 milligrams prior to that. So osteoporosis and low bone mineral density is one of those atypical symptoms of celiac disease. Um, certainly if there are children who've had frequent bone fractures, if you've had a fracture with a fall that is, is not a severe fall, um, that would be surprising, that, that would be important to consider, maybe screening for things like celiac disease. So if I've, so in summary, uh, patients with celiac disease can present with bone mineral density uh, decrease, and it's about a third of patients uh, that have osteoporosis in adults, and up to 30% uh, of children can have low bone mineral density. The good news is in children, their bone mineral density improves after they start a gluten-free diet, and also making sure they take enough calcium and vitamin D intake. So if, they're, if you're worried about celiac disease, uh, please see your family doctor. It is a very simple blood screen that can be done um, and the results are also quickly available. If you'd like more in-depth information about atypical symptoms of celiac disease, the Canadian Celiac Association is offering a free webinar next Wednesday, May the 18th, May the 16th. And I'll be talking about not just uh, bone health, but other symptoms uh, and signs as well. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Char, for generously sponsoring this day and, the very, and all the Facebook Live sessions. If you enjoyed this session, consider uh, donating to the Canadian Celiac Association. This is the voice for the celiac community in Canada. It is a national charity. It helps coordinate events such as these um, and also to bring accurate information to support research uh, in celiac disease, looking for treatments and cures. You can make a donation by going to www.celiac.ca and you'll also find other valuable information by accessing the website. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you also for all your thumbs up. That was great to watch as I was talking this first time on Facebook Live. Much appreciated. And I'll be coming back in a few minutes talking about uh, other atypical symptoms. Join us if you can. Thank you.